This is the story of two science-minded bourbon drinkers. We started off as bourbon fans. We've been drinking bourbon way longer than we've been producing it. Who met over music. Two guys that came together in a metal band and decided that they needed to do something to start paying down the bills a little bit more. Started a fermentation company that helps hundreds of breweries and distilleries. We already kind of had a reputation out there with other master distillers, other distilleries. And founded what is currently the 14th largest bourbon distillery in the world. You know, in terms of how that ever happened, I wish I could tell you. A lot of people say that they don't know too much about the brand, but it's really that bourbon insider information there. Like, those who know, know Wilderness Trail. Our mission has always been just to make the best whiskey that we possibly can, and that's coming from bourbon fans. So we're bourbon fans with know-how, with the distillery, trying to make the best bourbon on the planet. This is Know Your Distillery, Wilderness Trail. In July of 2022, we visited Wilderness Trail Distillery and filmed the interviews that you'll be seeing here. Then, just three months later in October, it was announced that the Campari Group would be purchasing a 70% stake in the company for $420 million, with the option to purchase the remaining 30% in 2031 for a total of $600 million. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, obviously, this deal wasn't on the table when we filmed these interviews, so there won't be anything in there about that deal because it hadn't happened yet. But in an effort to keep this video the most up-to-date, co owners Shane Baker and Dr. Pat Heist said it was a win-win situation. We congratulate them on having the support of a great team that can help them grow into all 50 states and then well beyond our borders. If you remember back in 2009, the Campari Group purchased the Wild Turkey Distillery and it seems to be working out pretty well for them. Now that we're all up to date, back to the Wilderness Trail. It basically started with Shane Baker, a mechanical engineer, Dr. Pat Heist. He is a plant pathologist. They essentially met in a rock band and, uh, you know, pretty much decided rock and roll was, wasn't going to pay the bills quite like they thought it would. Them being both of the science mind and bourbon lovers, that's kind of what they bonded uh, by. They went with the fermentation side of the industry first. My business partner, Shane Baker, and I, we started Wilderness Trail back in 2013. We're kind of known as the science guys of bourbon because we operate another company called Firm Solutions that markets yeast and fermentation products to about 600 other distilleries and breweries worldwide. Selling yeast and enzymes and biological lab services has put this place on the map and it's also allowed us to perfect the sweet mash fermentation process. Uh, and I believe we're the only sweet mash producer on the Heritage Bourbon Trail. If you know anything about being a yeast supplier, one thing that we learned early on is the yeast gets the blame for every problem that a brewery or distillery has. So over the years, we kind of became sort of the troubleshooters of the industry because we're always getting that phone call of, hey, this damn yeast isn't working. By the time we built Wilderness Trail, we had already been involved with hundreds of other distilleries troubleshooting issues. And so we wanted to carry forward a lot of the really great ideas we've seen and, you know, forget about all the bad ideas that we've seen. And just taking the, that black book of what not to do, what to do, picking it apart and applying it to our process is what we're famous for at this point. We've already established ourselves with the fermentation side of things behind the scenes with other master distillers, other distilleries. So we kind of had a reputation to maintain and uphold already of saying, okay, well, these guys, I've been doing this for 20 years. Let's see if they're they're up to snuff with the rest of it, right? And then we migrated over into the distilling world with Wilderness Trail in 2012, started distilling in 2013. We've gone from a very small distillery to currently the 14th largest bourbon producer in the world. We kind of took a backwards approach as a young distillery. You know, a lot of young distilleries kind of start with sourcing product, right? And then while while their product ages, or maybe they just source all the way through, we kind of went the opposite way where we made our stuff. And while we were resting on it for the last four years, we then did contract production on top of that. So just start, sort of gathering our clients, letting some things age, collecting money as that happens, right? Um, and so really kind of though the true start and the true orientation of it was just science first. When we first started out, the supply was really small, just kind of a barrel a day on a pot still, graduated up to those 12 barrels on the column, and now we're doing around 230 barrels a day now and looking to increase that number. We kind of just checked out three new fermenters that's gonna help us bump that production up. 
just to go to show, you know, our first brick house only holds 2,500 barrels. And that was all we thought we needed because, you know, you're producing maybe a couple hundred barrels a year at that point. So 2,500 barrels, that should take a few years to fill out, right? Vetting from our previous clients who are master distillers, you know, uh, who have been in this for decades, you know, finding out, okay, hey, yeah, guys, this juice is really good. You're gonna have to do something about this. We fill up a 25,000 barrel rick house every couple months now. So, massive changes, massive changes. <laughs> So there's a lot of things that make Wilderness Trail unique from other distilleries. Being able to have a catalog of, you know, thousands of yeast strains on hand and really knowing how each of those yeast strains, whether it's a good or a contaminant or something like that, how that operates. We're also a sweet mash producer, so most of the other Kentucky bourbon producers produce a sour mash whiskey. And that's where you carry forward some of the leftover liquid from a previous distillation. To make the mash, we use all fresh water here, which makes us a sweet mash producer. Uh, the entire sweet mash fermentation process is gonna be a little bit more expensive going in. So there wasn't some accounting board that decided that we needed to get maximum efficiency out of here. We have to do X, Y, and Z. For us, you know, we don't use any sour mash with anything we do. So we start with all fresh water grains and yeast every single time. And not only that, but doing the sweet mash to the size that we do. We have six 20,000 gallon fermentation tanks. And for a lot of distilleries, that is a large size to have to try to mitigate any kind of bacterial contamination or anything like that. Part of that quality is going to be our lower distillation proofs. We're coming off the still around 138 proof across the board on all three of those mash bills that we run. And then we have one of the lower barrel entries in the industry. We go in at 110 on our bourbon, the weeded bourbon and the high rye. And then we also go in with the rye whiskey and the high rye bourbon at 100 proof. Our levels of quality control start from the beginning, right? So it's it's not just, hey, the house is coming off the still, and it's not, hey, how's this coming out of the barrel? It's, how is this these trillions of cells operating right now, <laughs> you know? And we also work with local farmers to bring in some local grains too. I think all of those add on to a unique thumbprint for our product, and you can really taste it in, in a finished product because most of our brand is around four, four and a half years old out on the shelf but it doesn't drink like a four-year-old from another distillery that might be very husk forward, AKA corn forward. Wow, just wanted to cut in for a beat and let you all absorb because that was a lot of science talk. Did you count how many times science has been said? The science first. The science guys. The science mind. Mad scientists. Science oriented. Based in science. The science and the science. Science, 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 science. 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 I'm gonna say a lot. Mm. Yeah, but all the science-ness of Wilderness Trail inspired the name of the weeded bourbon blend we ended up doing with them. So stay tuned later in the episode for more info about that. In the meantime, we want to tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the t-shirt and hat that I'm wearing. Also, all of our glassware, hoodies, because it's hoodie weather, bottle cut candles, and more. Always coming soon. That's whiskeyambitions.com. We'll be right back. So there are a lot of things that uh, make Williams Trail very unique, including the barrels that we use. We use uh, what are considered the Cooper Select Barrels from Independent Stave. They uh, are number four char with extended uh, seasoning period compared to a lot of the bar barrels that are used here in the state of Kentucky. So the Cooper Select is gonna be an 18 month air cured stave. They're putting those staves out in the yard, letting them get exposed to the elements. What that's gonna do is allow for natural degradation of the wood, which is going to allow us to go in and be able to extract more flavor components out of that barrel in a shorter amount of time. The standard in the industry is six months. They just don't present that flavor profile as well as those barrels do. So the future of Wilderness Trail 
if you were to take an aerial photo of this place right now and then fast forward to two or three years from now, we'll probably have another eight or ten uh, bear warehouses. Growth, growth, and more growth. We're 10 years old, which for some businesses is a long time, but in the distilling world, that's still very much a baby. We are going from a, you know, modest amount of case sales, you know, 40 to 60,000 uh, cases across the United States and, and around the international. Uh, we're allocated in almost every state that we're in. And so the future for us is just rolling into, you know, 100,000, 200,000, half a million cases. Now, whether we'll sell that many, we don't know, but we're rolling into that much inventory. Our national and international footprint should expand significantly within the next two to three years. And that's one thing that we're putting a lot of effort in right now. You saw our bottling line, you know, we're increasing our capacity for bottling. You hear hand bottled and it sounds really awesome, but wait until your hands are the ones that are applying all these labels, handwriting everything. It would take an entire day to do 200 bottles. Now we do that in about 10 minutes. We're increasing our fermentation capacity and our distillation capacity, so the number of barrels that we make on a daily basis is increasing. If you're gonna make 70 something thousand barrels like what we make, you gotta build two to three of those very large warehouses every year, and so we're kind of ahead of schedule for once. Of course, if you come here right now, we have rick houses that are being set up left and right. Moving past that four year mark, moving past that six year mark, now entering that seven, eight year distillate. And uh, so growth and age are gonna be the two biggest things. So we recently came out with our eight year old high rye. Uh, we're gonna come out with a six year old rye whiskey, which is, that's hands down my favorite mash bill to work with is the rye whiskey. So just working on getting more of those age stated products out. So Wilderness Trail has several different expressions. A lot of people ask us, when are you gonna do something new? And it's like, hell man, we got, you know, three different mash bills. Now all of our core products are gonna be bottle and bottle and small batch. And what that's allowed us to do is drop the price point on our rye whiskey, cause that used to be a single barrel cash strength. So that's being able to get into more bars, make more cocktails. With that, we've also kind of premiumized our barrel program by pulling back those single barrel varieties into only doing it in the private barrel program. So if you get a single barrel or anything high cast strength, small batch, that all has to come through my sales program. And that's something that we're working together to privately curate for you as well too. The first mash recipe that we that we came out with as a bottle in bond was our weeded bourbon. Some people call it our yellow label. That's got 64% corn, 24% wheat, and 12% malted barley. Gonna have kind of your traditional wheat flavor profile. It's gonna be very caramel, toffee for it, have some of those oak notes in the back. I get a little bit of citrus out of it, um, but just more of that confectionery kind of sweetness that comes through. And then we also have an identical recipe of that with respect to corn and uh, malted barley, but we've got 24% rye. That will be our black label, what people refer to as our high rye bourbon. That one's gonna be more of your dark chocolate notes, your stone fruits, a little bit of tobacco, a little bit of that cracked pepper in there as well. And then we also have a rye whiskey that is our, in a, it has a yellow, or a green label rather, big surprise there on the rye. Uh, that's 56% rye, 33% corn and 11% malted barley. So it's gonna yield itself to be a little bit more herbaceous, a little bit more floral. I get a lot of just those like botanical notes, some Earl Grey. Your spicy notes are more kind of that clove and nutmeg profile and a little bit of cinnamon and uh, spearmint in there as well. Tasting is also one of my <laughs> fortes. <laughs> Those are our flagship three. Uh, and then of course we finally have some six year available and just released a limited amount of eight year. Those are all offered as small batch bottle and bond, but we also do barrel picks. And so you can find those available as a single barrel barrel strength as well. When you come in and do a barrel pick, you're gonna love Macaulay Minton at the end of it. We do love you Macaulay. And Haley. Yeah. And Dr. Pat Heist. Yeah, okay, everyone on the team. We love everyone on the team. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we're breaking in here is to tell you about what happened after the cameras stopped rolling 
And that was a single barrel pick that turned into a weeded small batch blend, which is like only one of two that have happened this year. So very honored for that. Yeah, so we were tasting six weeded single barrels and we found three that we really liked something in each. So instead of just, you know, accepting one of those, we thought, what if we put the art of blending on display and come up with something that's better than each of these individually? So that's what we did. And all that science talk we were alluding to earlier is what inspired the name of this blend, which is Wheat Science. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> so typically you can only get our barrel picks if you're a patron and that's at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night. Uh, you can join for as little as one buck a month. But because this was a combination of three barrels, we had an unusually high yield. So if you'd like to have a barrel at home for yourself, you can go to kegandbottle.com and on their barrel picks page, you'll find us and that's where you'll find the bottom. That's right. Now back to Macaulay talking about single barrel picks. We use six different yeast strains and three different mash bills. So that kind of, puts out kind of a unique wheelhouse of flavors and just actually working with people, putting that two and two together and actually putting a little personal curation and care behind it. That's what gives me passion in it. Bottle and bond was important to us. It is a statement. Bottle and bond says that the, the person that bottled this actually made it. That takes all the rules of bourbon that you already have in place and add a whole nother set of rules on top of that, right? So it makes it one of the most regulated spirits uh, in the US. The other thing is bottle and bond has to be at least four years old. So to be a new distillery and say the first thing we ever released was bottle and bond, that says, well, the first thing we're releasing, we made it. And the first thing we're releasing is at least four years old. So why Danville, Kentucky? Very fortunately, Danville is located right along the Wilderness Trail, which, which is what we named our distillery after. So Wilderness Trail is actually a real thing. It's a, it's a trail that comes through here that Daniel Boone and other early pioneers would have led settlers through the Cumberland Gap to settle this area. Goes right through Danville and splits and goes up to Louisville and then on over to uh, Fort Boonesboro. So we also got our name from being here in Danville, which is fortuitous. The first time that I saw our bottle out in the wild, just up on a bar, I got like a little emotional. I was like, oh, it's my baby out there. Uh, it's been a real crazy trip. Every time we pull into Wilderness Trail, we kind of got to pinch ourselves looking around at all these barrel warehouses and different things. We're a family here, and that's why all of us have been here for so long. We've been here since the brand emerged, and we're going to continue to be here for years to come. It's exciting to see it grow, and it's very much exciting to go from, who is this, what is this brand, I've never heard of you guys before, to me showing up to a talk or a conference or something and people being like, oh my God, that's Wilderness Trail, I've got all your stuff at my house. And I think anyone who visits here at Wilderness Trail kind of gets that sense of family when they're here, and, and for that reason, you know, we get a lot of people coming back to see us. I think there's a lot of um, pride and kind of a sense of self-ownership behind Wilderness Trail as well. We aren't trying to do something that's crazy or off the wall, right? We're not trying to reinvent the wheel that is whiskey. Uh, we're actually just trying to refine it step by step by step. Here we are, you know, this, this is Wilderness Trail. Right, thanks for joining us for this look at Wilderness Trail Distillery. And our thanks to Dr. Pat, Macaulay, Haley, Emily, and everyone else at the Wilderness Trail team. If you haven't subscribed to us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There are suggestions of other videos down here, and we hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, Wilderness Trail. Until next time, drink more bourbon. Mm -hmm.